my presentation uh, as um, was introduced is with, uh, with Javier Amores, Nicolai Stanek, and David Blanco, and it is about predicting integration of refugees. So this is more like a methodological paper. We have some results, but probably the important uh, part here is just to um, to show how we can use a computational method uh, in order to obtain some benefit and um, and have an indicator to help um, the integration of refugees in our society. So um, the first thing I think I think you're most of you are aware of the reality, especially in Europe, with the um, massive. Uh, uh, arrival of asylum seekers and other persons of concerns to the um, to Europe, especially to South America, Europe, Italy, uh, Greece, and Spain, but they go up to other countries like uh, Germany, Austria, etc. So there is a very big problem in this in the uh, for many governments in the sense that um, uh, there might be some programs to relocate people, and this programs exist in the European Union and also in the United Nations a High Agency for Refugees. And in some countries, they have some relocation programs uh, when they receive people that come and, and uh, need to uh, um, apply for an authorization to, to get an asylum. And they get it. So sometimes they need to be uh, sent to some place where they have better opportunities, not only economical opportunities, but also um, uh, social opportunities in the, in the sense of integration opportunities. So this is just uh, the case. Uh, we have to look for many indicators for that relocation programs. Um, but uh, one of these indicators is integration. Integration is a very, very broad concept. Uh, social integration could be seen from many perspectives. So uh, probably we are try trying to take one of those pers uh, perspective in order to um, to get a variable that can help us to uh, tell which place is better com in comparison to another, which place is better uh, for uh, an asylum seeker to go there and to have a, a, a better opportunity to uh, to integrate. So. Um, there are many uh, studies, and there, is a, um, there are a, a lot of literature in the in the in the, in the field of migration studies, uh, especially with perception of migration, how some uh, sociodemographic characteristics can influence this perception. Just to name some of them, like nationality, age, education, income, political ideology. So we know there is a, a there is a big importance to the uh, of these sociodemographic factors to predict the acceptance of the refusal of refugees, since they uh, they can condition the degree of acceptance of or, or rejection of refugees as it has been seen in the in the in the past literature. So. Um, we have like a, a variable that we want to 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 know that is the acceptance, the level of acceptance of mi of migrants and refugees. Uh, but we don't have enough data to do things like predicting this uh, um, the level of this variable in every local uh, community in every every region. We have many surveys. Uh, um, I'm talking now about Europe, whether it's where I'm going to focus my presentation. Um, there are like international or regional surveys like the Eurobarometer or, or other national surveys that include uh, questions for, uh, for citizens in order to, to know if they uh, agree or not to, to help uh, refugees. But we don't have the, that, the data with um, geolocalization. The objective of this research is to estimate the probability of acceptance of refugees, but not only of, uh, as a matter of, of, of an individual probability, but as a matter of a regional probability. So as I said before, we have a lot of information from surveys that help us to orientate and uh, to, to, to answer that question, but surveys do not have many, in many cases, regional data. And when they do have, like in the case, for example, of Germany, it sometimes it's like it's sensitive and you cannot access to 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 local or to regional data uh, because of of uh, some private concerns uh, 
So we develop uh, the strategy uh, based on machine learning uh, um, and some computational methods and develop some synthetic populations in order to transform the data we had from the surveys to data we can use for, um, for uh, the regional level. So this is in the area or in the field of database migration planning. This is an area like it's an emerging field that uh, is related to how we use data, how we use um, uh, computational methods, how we, do, we use artificial intelligence to uh, have a better mig migration planification. So this is, as I say, emerging er an emerging area, but has a lot of challenges yet. And, um, uh, we have, I mean, the, the, the core of this is to have uh, a lot of data or some good data in order to get good insights. So there are fa past experience in, in this area, for example, with Twitter. Uh, there are some studies that I uh, am showing here on the slide that use Twitter to, uh, to predict mobility patterns or use Twitter to even predict social integration of refugees. Um, there are also some other that don't use Twitter, but they use another other other kind of data and models in order to um, uh, to create uh, or to predict uh, which places are better for um, uh, for a refugee in order to have a, a higher um, probability to integrate in terms of a job. Uh, in terms of, of getting a job, so these studies are like a very very. Um, um, uh, representative of database migration planning, and what we're doing in this paper is continuing this uh, this 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 field. So what we did exactly is we uh, used data from the Eurobarometer, that is a, an international survey in Europe, that include a question about supporting or not refugees. So this question was uh, uh, made uh, in since 2015, and we use. Uh, data from two years, uh, exactly we use five surveys in, in, uh, in those years, and we extract from the data uh, all the uh, sociodemographic characteristics that are the, the, the features that we know we could use, in a, uh, that we could find also in a census, not only in a survey. So this is important that we could have some descriptive characteristic of in, the, in the survey that we could uh, later get in the census in order to produce uh, synthetic populations. Um, so um, I use a supervised machine learning model. So uh, if you're not familiar with that, it's just machine learning helps you to use data to produce a model. And with, with that model, you can make predictions. So uh, the model learn from your data and then give you a prediction. So uh, we could do this with the survey, and it was it was interesting because we when we modeled the target variable that was the acceptance or not of uh, of refugees, uh, we could predict uh, the level of, of acceptance of any um, citizen just by knowing his or her sociodemographic variable. So at it, at an individual level, uh, we could make predictions for that having the survey data. But we still need it, something different because we need something that is regional, some, something geographical. So um, we, first of all, we did all the, um, all the model for the individual level with this. Uh, um, this is this is where the, the features we include in the in the model. And then we have to do something extra in order to um, uh, to to make those model help. Uh, help help uh, uh, to get our, our objective. So the first thing was just uh, to run the models. We use logistic regression, decision trees, a random forest, super vector machines, and near, uh, nearest key neighbors, uh, key nearest neighbors. Um, there are models that are, we call shallow models. We didn't use here neural networks, but we use uh, some um, machine learning um, models, traditional models, in order to to uh, to get that uh, uh, that the model to to make the prediction. This is what we get at the individual level, and uh, the accuracy was okay, and the other. Um, um, metrics were also okay. Probably we got better for logistic regression. We was very nice because we could in, uh, have some interpretation and also with decision trees. So we see that something, that some variables like age or like country or like education have an influence of, of what an individual um, uh, think in terms of uh, helping or not refugees. So um, 
to overcome this, uh, the limitations of this individual part, we create synthetic populations. This is another computational method, method that is not probably very popular in social sciences, but um, is probably more in the, uh, you can see in the field of transportation, is just creating artificial uh, populations. When you, when you don't know the population, you can estimate how any individual of that population could be. So you take the data from the census of a, of a, of a city, of a region, or of a country, use the, the data of the census as an a priori probability, and then create that artificial population, and um, then you could apply any model you use for the individual level. So the thing we use in the past uh, in, in, in the last uh, in, in the last step of the of the study, uh, predicted at an individual level the um, the level of acceptance of refugees. We then use uh, use that model to do it for the artificial individuals we create in the synthetic population stage. So we create that for 271. Uh, geographic regions in Europe that is something uh, that is, is, is like a little bigger like than a city it's like I don't know each country has a different name for that and uh, so we, we did um, that thank you I have three minutes so this is um, what you see is just the way we create these synthetic populations and um, we create a very big database with all that, those predictions. It was like a, a very big thing. And we have results. We have results for every model. So we could compare models. All, what you see there are the six models that we, we use. And we could see that there are, of course, difference in the, in the, in the prediction models, which is also natural. Uh, we see also that we have differences between the countries, and this is natural because we saw that in the in the in the survey. So there is nothing new that. Uh, um, but we also see uh, that we could see more interesting thing when we go to the very regional level. That, that is what we don't have now in the surveys. So what we what you see here in these three southern European countries, Spain, Italy, and Greece, is that we could find the specific level of prediction for for um, for for the regions. And just to have a very very quick look, we see that regions that are more populated, uh, like for example in Spain, Madrid, uh, or Catalonia, or in Greece, Thessaloniki, and Athens, or in Italy, Rome, and Milan, um, this or the, the cities that we get more um, levels of acceptance of refugees. So this is uh, something that we did. Uh, we also uh, um, run some statistical analysis about the longitudin uh, long longitudinal changes and see that the worst uh, um, year was 2016. And then you, we just, uh, with that as a conclusion, we uh, tried to create these maps that are actually interactive maps. And uh, we have, we created like a, um, the first articulated data set to estimate social integration in, uh, in, in all regions in Europe that didn't exist before. So using these techniques, we try to help um, people that, uh, that need this data to have a migration planning and and that's that uh, that's it thank you very much